What does it look like when God calls out to you? Will you respond and be obedient and follow His calling, or will you not? As we reflect back on my life, I was a big time sinner, a really big time sinner. And God was calling out to me for as far as I knew for the past six, seven, eight years, and uh, finally in 2015, I, I finally gave him my life, and I started following after him full force. <clears throat> I tried to follow him in 2011, but I think I tried to follow him out of fear, and I didn't really know anything about the Lord or his word or anything. I didn't know nothing about discipleship or, or just anything as a whole. So I pretty much, I was in the faith for a couple months and then I backslid pretty heavily in 2011. And I just ran after things of the world. I, I think I wasn't ready. I didn't know what I was doing, a lot of stuff. So fast forward to 2015. I could feel a really strong calling for the Lord. I was trying to seek out spiritual experiences in different ways by contacting uh, psychic mediums and uh, meditating, listening to binaural beats, trying to open up my chakra system, just studying about the whole chakra system, uh, Middle Eastern theology, stuff like that. And I was going about this in the totally wrong way but that's pretty much how I was running after it. I was trying to access God, but through my own way, instead of through His way. And along this, you know, I kept running across so much information that was just pretty much explaining, you know, uh, the answer just kept coming up in my mind and every bit of information I read on the internet, YouTube, whatever, whatever I was searching out and studying, just Jesus kept popping up. Jesus, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the way. So I finally come to wit's end and I says, okay, okay, Lord, you win. And I decided to follow after him wholeheartedly. But it wasn't just a simple decision. You know, I had to come across some people in my life that asked me to go to their church and just, just different, a lot of different strange ways. The Lord works in mysterious ways, He really does. And so uh, I made an ultimate decision to uh, give my life to the Lord. And remind you, uh, I was only, I got married in 2014 and uh, 2015 is when I gave my life to the Lord. And I told my wife, you know, I was gonna give my life to the Lord and run after Him full force, you know, and that's my decision. And I hope that she'd stand by my side. She assured me that she would. So I started getting in my Bible. Every day I had some a pretty good pastor and teacher that were on my side, that were showing me the ropes, that were ministering to me heavily. And I was just reading the Bible nonstop. Uh, listening to the audio Bible, worship music, praise, and everything. And I think during this time, I was, uh, the Word of God says in Ephesians 5, 26, that you're washed, renewed, and sanctified by the reading of the Word of God. It actually says that the church is washed and renewed and sanctified by the reading of the Word of God. But the believer is part of the church. So that's pretty much what it says. You're sanctified by this reading of the Word of God. And so that's what I was doing without any knowledge of what was even happening. I was just told by my pastor and preacher that's what I had to do, so that's what I started doing. And so uh, I started to become changed by this. And it, there's a big difference between uh, getting in the Word and reading it and really giving your life over to the Lord and attending church. 
you could attend a church for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and still not get sanctified or really even know the truth of the Lord or, or anything or really even have a real tangible relationship with the Lord. It takes you to get in His Word. You have to get in His Word because it feeds your spirit and also it develops a relationship with Him through your prayer time and fasting and, and just understanding everything that the Lord has commanded you to do. He's telling you all these commandments not to be a strict person, but to also show you if you don't follow my commandments, like you're going to have a real hard time having a real true tangible relationship with me. And also this sin will drag you to hell and it'll destroy everything. So that's pretty much why he's telling you to be obedient in all this. And so during this time, you know, I started reading the word, everything. And I was a new Christian in 2015. And uh, it was like, man, I was just getting so changed. And I, I started reaching out to my friends and family members and everything, thinking that they were going to be shocked by all this and that they would decide to give their life to the Lord. But that's totally not how it went. You know, they just pretty much wanted to cast me off and just like, uh, well, he's going to church or whatever, but that's his own thing. I got my own stuff going on. They really didn't understand the depth of it. And the Word of God bears this out. It, sa it says in the Word that uh, if you preach the gospel to someone and, uh, and they reject it, it's because the God of this world who was saved has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot receive the gospel. So they're pretty much, they're blinded and they're just walking dead man is pretty much what they are. But they have no concept of this. They don't understand it. They, they think they're living life to the fullest and everything else. But they have no understanding of, of, of the position that they're standing in. You know, God calls out to all of us many, many times throughout life. And often, most of the time, we reject it out of our uh, ignorance and unbelief and our confusion and a lot of our carnal mind that we were birthed into from Adam and Eve's uh, fallen nature. And it's real interesting because the scripture says, uh, I told you about how you need to be sanctified, and that's Ephesians 5.26. But also Paul mentions that our mind needs to be renewed to the mind of Christ. Now, you usually don't hear this kind of stuff in religious churches because I don't think they fully understand it or maybe they have a certain agenda of what they're trying to teach. But uh, yeah, our mind needs to be renewed to the mind of Christ. So that means we need to think like Christ. We need to understand his ways. And we need to understand what he, he asks, asks of us and wants us to do. And it's crazy, so I was reaching out to all my friends thinking that they were going to uh, give their life over to the Lord, and none of them even really cared, you know. They are just like, oh, whatever, you know. And I really didn't understand this fully until like a year or so later. I just understood, man, they're just, they're just, they're sleeping. They're, they're dead. They're blind. They don't understand. I've been renewed in the Spirit. I've been born again in the Spirit, and they just totally don't understand like I listen to, to sermons and stuff all the time because that's what I desire. That's what I desire is to know and grow in the Lord. And I'm not saying I'm a perfect human being because I'm not, you know. As a big time sinner, you know, a lot of that sin and stuff started to change whenever I started getting heavily in my word and really giving my life over to Him. And I'm still going through a sanctification process right now, you know, and I'll continue to go through sanctification until the day I depart from this earth and cross over into eternity. But the thing is, is uh, you really have to uh, be strong. You have to stay in your word. If you're a person that just goes to church on the weekends and you're just listening to a sermon from a preacher, it's going to be super tough, super, super tough for you even to understand who God is and to make it in the kingdom. You have to treat this so, so real, and you have to get in the Word yourself and just run after God yourself, learning who He is. And during this time of you reading the Word, you'll be sanctified. Your mind will be changed, 
and you won't desire the sinful stuff that you desired before. You just won't, it'll just fall away. Like I used to cuss before I got, before I gave my life to him in 2015. And just after reading the word so much, you know, I don't even desire to cuss, you know, I, I don't really care. And it's not like uh, I'm just, it's not like I'm trying to be religious and just not cussing to try to be a good person. It's like my nature has been changed from the inside out. And I just, I just don't do it, you know? And same with fasting, like, if you really want to experience God, you really got to get in there fast and read your word and really be dedicated and really be serious about this because you only have one life to live. And uh, if you're just loving your life out here to please yourself, and then it's going to be a rude awakening when you cross over into eternity. Because many people think that they're going to make it into heaven. But it all depends on if you've been born again of the Spirit, you've been sanctified, and if you've been obedient to God's Word. Well, first of all, if you don't even know what God's Word is or what He even says, how, how can you be obedient to it? And you can't know what God's Word is by listening to a preacher or a pastor. You have to get in the Word yourself because sometimes they're unskilled in the Word. They're, or they're just preaching like, because they want people to come in and, and give their money to the church. So they're not really preaching the right messages or fully understanding this. And so you got a whole group of people in these churches who really don't fully understand who God is. They're praising and worshiping him for dying at Calvary, and that's awesome. But there's so much more to this faith. You know, yeah, we were saved from sin. Jesus did die from our sins. But once we get saved, we must continue in the faith, and we must endure to the very end, and we must be holy as our Father in heaven is holy. That's what we're told to do. And the only way to do that is to get the Word and just renew your mind, start living for the Lord fully, all the way out. So I just want to drop that little word. Uh, so that's what it's like when God calls you. You know, he'll, he'll try to call you many, many times throughout life. And it's up to you to uh, recognize that and give your life to him. And if not, you know, that's it's on you it's on you so i'm dropping these teachings so just uh stay tuned subscribe if you want and i got plenty more teachings to come take care guys see you later